So these guys came and, uh, well, the CPI came in a little bit hot for us and BTC started dumping. There was panic everywhere, but the 618 FIB came to the rescue. So is that the end of the dump? Is there more to come? What are we doing with these altcoins? Where are they sitting? Guys, I've got everything here for you. I've got a little bit of a mix of everything. I've got layer ones. I've got RWAs. I've got uh, AI. I've got gaming. I've got meme coins. We're talking levels, areas, panic zones, where we're not panicking, what is happening. So I'm looking after you today. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys got a bit freaked out there with that BTC dub. So we've got a lot to talk about here, guys. Let's get right into this. Blood red, blood red, banter bubbles here. Uh, it was a little bit worse, say 45 minutes ago to an hour ago when we were squeaking around in our chairs, we were pacing up and down, we were feeling the pressure, but the 618 FIB came to the rescue for us once again. The science uh, came into play, but uh, we're seeing a few green shoots now. And uh, we, if we look at strength, and uh, strength that have that has done well. This ENA keeps delivering. I know you guys are calling it the lunar uh, of this cycle, but this ENA is still starting to just grind up for us. And uh, the minute BTC got a nice bounce, we saw Audi uh, start moving 6%. Remember, when BTC shows a little bit of strength, you want to look at things like Audi, you want to look at things like Stacks uh, and those type of things. So uh, let's, uh, let's start going through some of these things. But first things first, most importantly, what has just happened here uh, in the market? So look at this absolute bleed out. So uh, BTC has come down hard and uh, it's pinged uh, the 618. And I actually just want to show you guys uh, a little something from uh, from yesterday quickly before we get a little bit deeper here. Let me just pull this thing up uh, for you guys quickly. I just want to show you uh, something interesting here. Uh, let's find it. Let's find it first. Okay, there it is. Um, okay, this is what I wanted to show you. This is me yesterday. Okay, let's uh, let's just take a look at uh, the current situation. Going to be a potential reaction zone, was going to be a potential bull zone and a bounce zone. And uh, right now we are testing a major area. The 68,800 zone is a big one we need to keep our eyes on. And uh, if we can stay above that, then things should be uh, okay. And then we can't ignore the 618. There's nothing wrong with a nice little 618 bullish retest uh, for Bitcoin. If we do come down uh, to the 618, I want to see a strong bounce though. We can't sit there and fuck around in this area and float around and so the key <laughs> the key word was we can't sit there and we can't fuck around in that area we were looking uh, for a nice strong bounce there and that's exactly what these guys gave us it's exactly what the science uh, has given us once again and that's why i just love these 618s so uh, we played this game i added to my long position those of you uh, who were watching yesterday you know that i i was in a short from these highs here i didn't quite catch the top but i was in that short I caught the 382, I closed my short, I opened a long on the 382 FIB, then I added to my long uh, on this weekly level, and uh, at a last uh, ditch attempt there, I added up to my long on that 618 for the science. This was our this was our Goblin Town zone. If we lost the 618, we go straight to hell, um, or at least, uh, you know, for the short term. So for me, the 618 was a major area, and uh, this is what I'm doing now uh, on Prime XPT. This is my current uh, trading situation. I've got a little bit of AVAC there and uh, now my btc position is finally uh, getting a little bit flatter but at least we have our low marker at least we have our area now where we know the bottom was of that potential move so if we're going to go deeper well things are going to get really dirty and uh, we're going to have to deal with it now but uh, yeah i'm not going to lie i was under a bit of pressure there uh, on that btc long but slowly slowly moving up we're obviously going to have to monitor it because that was a little squeeze now and uh, i'm sure we had a lot of shorters in the mix and uh, we got that quick move up but is it sustainable are the bulls going to come back and hold us up now that is the real test so we got to keep our watch closely uh, on this current uh, this current btc on the four hour and uh, so just to recap what am i watching today big level now the 618 test this is now our zone this is our marker uh, that we are looking at there was a nice strong buy candle there so call it 67 500 that is what we're looking at and uh, what can happen here we can easily get a slow bleed out now after that little pump if the bulls don't step in and they could quite easily come back and uh, test the 618 one more time so just be aware this has to be on the table for you if you are planning right now this has to be one of the options that you are looking at currently that they want to come and just close out some of this candle and maybe double bottom us and uh, then start pushing it higher so make sure in your planning today if you are long altcoins and whatever you're doing 
watch this area now watch this uh 67 500 region keep your eyes on that what is more bullish for me now well we've had a nice little bounce when do i turn super bullish here on btc well this was our big weekly close level this was a huge area for us this is a zone we want to reclaim now find support in this area and then start pushing a little bit higher so if we start generating support 68 800 68 900 in that area then we can say okay maybe these bulls are really going to start coming back for us so there's two scenarios that i'm looking for here i want to reclaim this weekly or i suspect they're going to want to fill this candle again and uh, come and beat us out so just be prepared for both scenarios i know it's looking good out there at the moment we've had a few nice bounces but understand they can come back and they can ruin the fun very quickly and uh, when do we turn super bullish well once we break this trend again once we reclaim this nice little 382 then we can really start uh, you know putting up the gears and uh, start pushing this thing higher so that is my current plan now uh, for btc and that is how i'm managing things at the moment uh, with some of my alt trades okay let's look at uh, what is going on in the news so neko says crypto quant notes in btc the fourth strongest profit taking by long-term holders in history. Okay, so there's been big sellers uh, in the market. They've been putting pressure uh, on everything here. And you've seen, you've seen it happening. You've seen the meltdown uh, in the price. Don't forget about this, the Hong Kong, uh, that Hong Kong is going to approve a BTC ETF uh, or EFTs uh, next week. I, I suspect it's the ETF. And uh, this, uh, this interesting take uh, on the CPI. Now remember, the CPI came in hotter today. It wasn't the end of the world hotter. It was about 0.1% or something. If we look at Forex, Forex Factory here, uh, we can see CPI came in at 3.5. The forecast was 3.4, but obviously it was still higher than the previous 3.2. So it's not, it's not exactly the end of the world. But uh, uh, the, the uni PCS, okay, aka the bond guy, says hot CPI or not, still no reason to be bearish, okay? He says US BTC ETFs have a total inflow of 12 billion in three months. We know the Hong Kong ETF is coming. The halving is less than two weeks. He says less supply and more demand through ETFs is bullish uh, in his opinion. So uh, there's a lot of different views out there. And I did, ran a little poll uh, on Twitter today. Go follow me on Twitter uh, at the Lord of Entry. And I, I just wanted to test the sentiment um, out there and see what you guys were saying. And we had, uh, we had 360 votes there and 64% uh, we're still bullish. They're saying BTC is going to turn. So there's very much bullish sentiment out there. Uh, you can feel it in the air uh, at the moment. And uh, well, this is this is always a, a nice little picture here for us. The liquidation heat map. Uh, that we like to look at and uh, this is a nice way to track uh, where there are potential areas where we can go and send uh, btc and there is a nice little juicy zone up here still at 69 300 and then there's a major area here 69 800 so there is a chance that these guys can still send it higher just to come take out uh, some of that liquidity higher up okay and uh, matthew was telling us well here's the false breakout pennant now you saw this all over Twitter. You saw this everywhere. Uh, this was a, a level that everybody was watching. And normally, when this is the case, when everybody is expecting something to happen, especially Twitter, it generally doesn't happen. Okay. And uh, it's very easy to fall into that trap. I was watching that level as well. I was watching that weekly retest uh, and things like that. So just another lesson here. Uh, when everyone expects something to happen a certain way, plan for the opposite okay and uh, that is why we always look for levels lower down that is why we also plan uh, for these lower areas and that is why uh, we pulled out that 618 because we know that btc loves that 618 bounce and they love a test uh, of that 618 so was that the bottom of the move difficult to say was that a, a, at least a good indication for us that there are buyers down there yes okay so there's a little bit of source there uh, for us that we might uh, be holding this area another key thing you're going to be watching today now while btc is well while btc is floating around uh, is this dominance so this is dominance on the weekly and uh, once again it's putting pressure on this weekly level so what does that mean for us well number one uh, the bulls are going to say well this is uh, dominance pressure on a weekly level we're expecting a rejection okay and a rejection for the bulls means that uh, these altcoins are going to start moving a little bit better for us so the bulls just want to see a push down the bulls just want to see us lose uh, this weekly level and uh, uh, well, the bears on the alts uh, are going to say, well, if dominance pops up, these alts are going to get absolutely wrecked. So look out for this potential scenario. And uh, we've been watching dominance on the weekly now for the last, probably for the last six weeks, we've been staring at this chart and we are getting very close to a move. As you can see, we're getting into a little squeeze here uh, at the moment. And uh, I must tell you, if I was trading altcoins and it was an altcoin setup that looked like this, 
Okay, I would say to you, I'm leaning to the bull side. I would say to you, I'm looking for a big pop here. And uh, that is, would be my plan. So if this was uh, an, an altcoin, for example, I'd be loading up longs here uh, under this 50-day MA. So all signs are pointing uh, to a potential pop here on dominance. Now, if dominance pops and BTC is pumping, that is obviously less hectic uh, for these altcoins. But watch out. If dominance starts popping and uh, BTC starts falling over, well, then uh, basically there's going to be a funeral. We're going to be getting our McDonald's outfits out again. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to probably take some kind of break because these alts are going to get absolutely smashed. So keep your eyes uh, on this dominance. It's a massive zone that you want to be watching right now. Okay. If we do push higher, where do we reject? That is our most realistic uh, next rejection zone. That is our most realistic next alt relief zone if we don't reject in this area. So big, uh, big level that you need to watch. Okay. Now, those of you that were freaking out when the levels, uh, when BTC was falling over, well, well I've got you covered. Okay. We're going to look at uh, um, lots of charts here. I'm going to try and fly through them because we've got a lot to cover for you guys. So you might have to rewatch and pause and do all these types of things uh, to the show if you want to get your levels. But I just wanted to cover you guys. I wanted to make sure you had a little something of everything here uh, that you can work with, at least that you can take away with you uh, today. Okay. This is the S&P and uh, showing weakness on that cpi news uh, let's see how that plays out so just keep one eye on the s p we have noticed lately they are tending to be a little bit more correlated at the moment btc and uh, the s p so just keep your eyes on that if there is strength in the s p we should see uh, btc are holding okay there so watch the s p carefully this is the daily showing a bit of weakness and uh, we might now be moving uh, a little bit lower so keep your eyes on that one and uh, then we've got uh, Mr. Crypto, again, people on Twitter talking about ETH versus BTC again. Okay, this conversation isn't going away and we've seen it uh, in ETH strength and he's talking about uh, bullish divergence. So what is bullish divergence? Well, essentially, uh, it's when your RSI, which is the indicator at the bottom here, starts leaning up and your price action is actually going down. It's basically an indication that at some point a reversal is imminent. Okay, and this is weekly divergence. Uh, this is bullish divergence on the weekly chart. So that means we could get some kind of big move uh, if this is going to play out. Obviously, divergences don't always play out. But the indications are there that we could get some kind of huge move here uh, based on what we're seeing if we're using this uh, divergence as a guide. And what does that mean? That translates into ETH strength, but that also translates into altcoin strength and a little bit more uh, altcoin relief and a little bit more altcoin action. Okay, uh, here's ETH on the weekly that we're going to watch and a nice little bleed out, but no changes to our main levels that we set up yesterday. So I have added to my ETH position. I didn't add much, but I did add uh, a little bit on that pullback there. So uh, at the moment, uh, your levels that you want to watch, 3350, your next level for ETH, 3200 and a little bit lower down 3050 these are all uh, support zones these are all reaction zones for you these are areas of interest these are areas where you can look for little buyers uh, and things like that in these zones and uh, little targets and markers that you can play with so save these areas on your chart watch that if we do get weakness these are key levels uh, if you're sweating out in a position and eth is dripping into a key level look for a bounce in that zone that is a relief zone so identify these areas 3000 uh, 350 3200 and a little bit lower down 3050 these are all uh, reaction zones uh, for you guys um how's the people in the chats here how is everybody um, I see Willem is saying no rate cuts. Um, Mr. Chiller is saying altcoin the season uh, uh, loading here. Um, how's everybody? Did you enjoy that little sweat up? Uh, I see Blair says, is ENA the next Luna that's pumping through the dump? Uh, look, it's looking strong. It's looking okay. And uh, Rob says, whales are going to dump like 21. Uh, are you talking about BTC going to 21? Yeah, let us know. Uh, Vincent also likes the idea uh, of an alt season loading. Guys, look, you don't get an alt season without hard work. You don't get an alt season without feeling some pain. Otherwise, it would be just be too easy. And uh, we wouldn't have the best stories to tell. So uh, just always remember, you know, you, you've got to feel a little bit of pain in the beginning. And uh, we enjoy, we enjoy the moments when things are pumping. Then we can look back and say, fuck, that was really good. That was really fun. And we can really appreciate uh, what happens here after we get, uh, after we get the pain and suffering. So uh, just appreciate what we, what we're doing here. And, uh, you know, a little bit of pain first, never hurt anybody. Um, okay. What else is going on here in the chats? Who? Yeah, Mr. Chillis is just hold. I like that. I like that. Uh, so, alt smashed 
smash the buy button says revved up biker okay loving uh some of these old coins and uh, i saw a note earlier ray i can't find it but uh somebody was saying tia is killing us again or something is it worth even looking i don't even know if i want to look uh at this uh, at this current celestia situation um okay i've got a couple of things lined up for you so uh earlier well yesterday we looked at phantom and uh, this was a nice one so phantom is showing uh, a little bit of bullish strength at the moment and uh, this is the exact move that i was looking for on phantom yesterday i said we're looking for a push uh, into this resistance zone and if it's going to stay bullish you are looking for that reversal uh, onto a nice little 382 and horizontal support so the opportunity is now coming it's presenting itself for you we got that bullish push on phantom and uh, now we're getting this pullback into the first bullish zone of interest so if you didn't grab phantom you might have an opportunity here at this first region now again you're going to want to watch btc you're going to watch that level you're going to watch what btc is doing you're going to keep your eyes on dominance but this is the setup we looked at yesterday a push into this reje rejection zone and now a pullback and here is your first uh, opportunity for phantom moving down into a 382 zone so eyes on this area now for phantom and uh, what i want to do now is if we get more weakness on btc and uh, I'm going to plan with uh, I'm going to plan with you guys. I'm going to show you next levels uh, on a lot of these tokens. I'm going to show you DCA zones uh, that you can buy in. But if we get more weakness on BTC, you need to plan uh, accordingly. You need to understand where's my next reaction zone, where's my next bounce zone. If they're going to send this market lower, where does Phantom uh, react? For example, so I've got a few areas here for you guys. And again, it's going to depend how deep BTC goes, how far uh, they are going to send it. So zone number one for phantom on weakness 0 0.877 okay zone number two for phantom on weakness 0 0.77 now both of these are nice zones both of these are nice reaction areas where we could get a relief if we are falling down in phantom this is where uh, you can get saved uh, with some kind of bounce okay so look out for these areas and uh, especially if you are sitting in positions and you are sweating out and phantom for example is bleeding down uh, into this type of region you don't want to you don't want to front run that area and start selling above a major support zone what you want to do is monitor what happens in that zone and see if you want to exit the market you really want to just sell the bounces uh, out of these areas instead of selling onto support because generally on these big support zones we get reaction we get some kind of movement and uh, just a prime example again is the btc bouncing off the 618 fib so that is a major area so you don't necessarily want to be selling while you're moving onto a nice 618 pool that is the area you want to look for a reaction uh, and a possible bounce and then if you want to exit you want to sell on the strength uh, after that bounce exactly uh, like we've done now so if you are bearish on the market your move would be to start selling now uh, on this btc bounce if you are bullish while well, you're holding uh, for that exact plan that we spoke about uh, a little bit earlier okay so you've got your levels now on phantom and uh, we've heard a lot of talk on phantom and uh, i know there's whispers now that uh, the next big play is going to be meme coins on the phantom ecosystem so if you are bullish phantom and you are bullish on meme coins in general we know they're not going away we saw it with solana we saw it with base is it moving uh, to phantom well if it is i've got two memes for you that i have bought uh, on the phantom chain number one is something called seke or cheque or whatever it is it's a meme uh, on andre cornier okay so this you can find uh, on deck screener make sure you get the correct contract address if you are interested in this so this is called cheque or seki uh, whatever you want to call it guys let me know um right now it's got a small market cap these things are slightly more difficult to buy you've got to use spooky swap and all those things uh, if you want to play that game so meme coin number one on the phantom ecosystem seki that I'm looking at or checky correct me if I'm wrong meme coin number two is something called blacky as well that you can get on spooky swap so these are the two meme coins on phantom that I have bought now uh, in anticipation of some kind of uh, meme run uh, in the FTM ecosystem so we've seen Solana pump we've seen base pump is uh, FTM going to be next I've got my eyes on these two and uh, these seem to be the most common ones uh, that are floating around so these are what I'm playing in at the moment and uh, that is if you are bullish on phantom and the new revived phantom we're talking about phantom with the new engine and uh, basically the old body the old wrapping but the new engine so that is the game i'm playing at the moment on phantom 
Okay, Solana Bulls. Well, we have had a ride, haven't we? So uh, all this congestion on the Solana network, you can hardly function uh, on it at the moment. And it makes sense that they are giving, uh, you know, the, the price is starting to pay the price for a bad network. So things are starting to fall over there uh, with Solana. But what we do know is that they minute, the minute they announce a fix or some kind of upgrade, we know there's going to be relief uh, in the Solana ecosystem. We, there's going to be relief uh, on Solana. And what you want to do, uh, I wouldn't fade soul put it that way so you want to be buying soul on uh, on big solid areas and soul number one is now sitting in a nice buy zone for us uh, at this 159 level so if you are looking for spot buys and you were looking for buys on soul earlier uh, you know a week or two ago and you were buying the top of solana Okay, you were buying green candles at $204 uh, on Solana. Now is your time to be buying some red candles on weakness onto uh, big support zones. Because if the market's going to bounce, you're generally going to find that these tokens are going to bounce on big support zones and big strong areas. So right now for Solana, if you zoom in, you can see on this weekly FIB pool, it bounced exactly on the 236 fib and it didn't do it once it did it twice uh believe it or not look at that perfection uh off the 236 fib so we know this is a big weekly level we know this is the 50 day ma uh giving us support as well and uh, that 236 fib so if you are looking for positions in solana what do you do where do you buy it this is your first zone number one 159 anything down to this level uh you are looking for buyers on soul and then a little bit lower down our next level if we're talking btc weakness we're talking dominance pump we're talking altcoins getting rinsed we're talking you crying at home lying in bed curled up uh, while you watch your portfolio burn out these are your areas that you want to be buying your next big zone 135 for solana those are your areas mark them on your charts if we hit these zones that's a buy zone uh, at the top of solana we said if we hit this 236 uh, fib at 160 that's a buy zone we are there now this is your time uh, if you want to look uh, for some kind of entry these are your areas now they are there in front of you so mark these on your charts 160 and uh, 100 and call it 135 uh, as your next major area for soul but again don't panic big levels if you're building a portfolio this is a gift this is an opportunity for you and uh, this is what you were looking for uh, three weeks ago when solana was pumping how's everybody here am i talking too fast let me know let me know am i talking too fast i see robin likes soul at 100 look i think soul at 100 is going to be a buy i think soul at 100 is going to be beautiful um let's see i mean could they send it that deep yes uh, it's possible maybe by the time it gets to 100 uh, we're going to have this 200 day ma pushing a little bit higher too so look out uh, I wouldn't take that off the table, actually, Robin. Uh, it is a possibility. So remember, in crypto, we never say never to anything because we had Sol at 220 or whatever it was in 2021. And Sol went all the way down to $8. Okay, nobody thought uh, they were ever going to see it. And uh, that is now what's happened. Oh, Rich maybe has helped my pronunciation. He says... Seki is pronounced like Keki. <laughs> okay, well, now we know. Now we know what it is. Thanks for helping me uh, with that one. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see, Dill on 2x speed isn't enough. <laughs> Uh, yes, Anastasia saying Robin is dreaming about that hundred dollar soul. Look, the minute uh, the minute soul wakes up and says we've fixed our problem, I think it's obvious uh, that uh, that these things are going to start pumping back up. So I wouldn't be too stressed. Um, okay, the next one I've got for you is injective. Just a little bit of bullish news. Look, nine thousand injective tokens uh, is no is no big deal. I mean, it's not nothing to write home about. But uh, the fact that uh, injective is burning tokens and all these things uh, is quite bullish for the injective ecosystem and uh, again no reason to exit if you are trading injective we hit our zone the other day we hit our buy zone that was a nice little area and uh, we are now drifting lower into our next area so that is the next juicy zone for me so if you are trading injective the big levels you want to pay attention to is right here right now at 31 and uh, then lower down it's our huge area anything down to this 200 day moving average for injective traders anything down to this little region ray do we not have the likes you need and you mustn't have said likes are not enough and you're, you're sending me to hell with this injective <laughs> ray don't you like injective bro injective and celestia they're supposed to run together oh the celestia bro i can't i can't anymore um, <laughs> uh who hates celestia 
<laughs> okay. Um, so the injective play is nothing to be stressed about, nothing to worry about. These are two big areas that you want to pay attention to. Anything down to 27.5. And uh, right now in this current zone, you can see uh, this is a juicy box. And uh, we did have some nice uh, juicy order blocks in this area as well. And uh, things were, yeah, things were looking okay. So there's a daily order block there. And uh, yeah, we do have support in that level. So that is what I'm watching. That is my injective play. So dips to 27, I'm adding to my injective position. I'm holding injective and uh, a little bit lower. You know, for me, it's a buy. We're still looking uh, for this move higher. I want to see this 50% push up at some point. That is going to come when we have our next little alt push. We're going to get a little 50% move there uh, on injective. So uh, just be patient, play the game and uh, watch your big zones. Okay, Emin says his beard represents the bull. It's looking sharp. <laughs> well, we've got the bull. Guys, we're never going to lose this bull. Okay, this is the bull market. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Sometimes, you know, things turn a bit south in a bull market. But uh, remember, the, the overall, we are in a bull market. Okay, Doge traders. Here we go. I've got some meme action for you guys. Okay, uh, so Doge respecting the 382 respecting the fib so if you were part of this doge bleed out now all we've seen is doge come uh, and react off a nice reaction zone what is the reaction zone it's the rising trend so when you when you're uh, planning your charts what you can do is you can put your trends in play and uh, remember the higher the time frame the better this is a 12 hour trend uh, for doge and uh, so far so good so we pinged this trend we've had a strong bounce remember now we've hit a nice support zone while btc has hit a 618 support and uh, we've had doge bounce so things are looking interesting nice little save here uh, on doge what do i want to see well i'd like to see the 382 fib hold so i would like to see doge hold 0.185 okay and you can see we are moving into a little tight little symmetrical triangle here and uh, what is going to happen next uh, well you know that's going to be up to uh, the crypto gods to decide what happens next but you can see we've got a move coming here on doge we are squeezing into uh, a little area so are we going to get that pop and is it going to fly and bang out uh, 23 uh, or are we going to eventually lose this trend and move to our next reaction zone so uh, what i want to say here if we get more weakness if btc gives us more more hell if dominance starts pumping how do i plan my doge trade where do i buy next if we lose this rising trend so i've marked this out for you it makes perfect sense to me here we've got a 618 in play i've got the 50 day ma i've got horizontals and i've got a rising trend for you so there's multiple reasons here why this next level is a big zone for us for doge so look out for this area down here this is 0.16 and uh, your setup is going to look something uh, along these lines. You're going to be very patient if it starts falling over. You're just going to sit back and you're going to wait. And uh, a lot of the time, what they do with these candles uh, is they start drifting you and they start teasing you. And uh, you want to try and buy a little bit early there. And then they're going to come and they're going to just bang you out there uh, on that trend and try and send it higher. So what I would say is be patient here. If you're looking for buyers in this area, if we get more weakness uh, now after, after today, if you're looking for the zone, 0 0.163, anything down to 0 0.159 for me is a nice little buy zone. That's a nice little reaction zone. And we should get the same reaction over there that we are getting with Doge right now. We should see a similar move. Okay, so that's going to give you a scalp. That's going to give you maybe the bottom of the next move that you can then uh, be involved in. So watch that area closely. And uh, if you are trading sold today, your support 0 0.185. Watch that area. If you lose 0 0.185, just look out. They might be coming to test that uh, candle low uh, one more time. Okay, so pay attention there. Then I've got another meme coin for you. And uh, if you look at WIF, and you and you track it with Doge. They got a very similar uh, look to them. So they've both just hung onto a rising trend. So this is with and uh, quite interesting to me. And it must be because of this Doge day, Ray. Uh, that Doge is recovering so strongly versus Whiff. Whiff was normally four twenty coming up. Four twenty. Four twenty. Whiff is normally my recovery play. If you if you get a, a dump in the market, we know that Whiff recovers so quickly. But is this weakness in Sol uh, starting to play a part in Whiff's reaction time and uh, reaction zone? Is Whiff getting old? Is Whiff the thirty five year old on the hundred meter sprint track? Maybe you know. And uh, let's uh, so let's just watch what's going on here. But levels for me to watch for Whiff, we had a nice bounce. Okay, we had the seven eight six uh, come into play. We had the rising trend and we had the horizontal. So this was 
was a nice little reaction zone for us for whiff so if you are bleeding in whiff that is your area where you start making rational decisions you let it fall into the zone and then you say okay we're reacting here what is my game plan how am i going about this and uh, whiff is now giving us uh, a level to work with so your first area of interest your support zone that you want to watch uh, if you are sitting in a whiff position i am also currently uh, in a whiff position i'm going to show you shortly um 3.3 if we lose 3.3 uh, that is an area that's going to tell us we could potentially start looking a little bit lower here uh, in uh, on whiff. So your next weakness zone we got to highlight. Let's just highlight a nice little horizontal here for you. Let's grab this guy. Okay, look at this nice little juicy zone here. So weakness on BTC. Where do you wanna, what do you want to plan for? What do you want to prep for? I would say whiff. Start looking. 2.15. 2.15 is your next weakness zone uh, for whip. So if we lose this area, 2.15 is where it's going to be for your next potential bounce zone. If you are trading whiff now, if you lose this current support, uh, look, they might come and play and test these wicks. Look out for something over here. That could give you something, uh, 3.16. But if you start, if we start losing this trend, this could be the beginning uh, of a move lower down uh, on whiff. So uh, keep your eyes on that level. And uh, those of you that know, I've been I've been trading on weeks, and I've been trading on uh, Prime XBT for you guys. And uh, here's my current week situation. So here's my whiff position here at the top that I grab now uh, on that uh, pullback. And uh, here's ENA. I've been sculpting a little bit of ENA uh, Lido, which is a trade I gave earlier today on Sniper Club. We were in a, a Sniper Club Zoom. Uh, I gave that one. And uh, there's Audis. And uh, I'm sure I had some Celestia here. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I don't know how many times is Ray the Celestia, bro. <laughs> it's a torture chamber. This thing. Um, I, I think this position's been chopped up, like chopped up, like five times. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But there it goes. Okay. So if you want to trade these tokens with me, uh, you can trade on multiple exchanges. You can look uh, in the description of the show. Okay. So this is yesterday's show, but the description should be uh, the same. There's a nice shopping list for you uh, down here. There's all these exchanges uh, that I trade on. Prime, XPT, and Weeks are at the top. They're both offering you uh, incredible deals here. And uh, Prime XPT lets you trade the stock market and lets you trade gold, oil, uh, silver, and those type of things as well. You can send crypto there. And and uh, if you if you send money to your account, they're giving you up to a seven percent uh, sign up bonus. So if you put a thousand dollars in, they're giving you seventy dollars uh, to trade with on Prime XPT. So give it a go. Uh, you've seen how I operate on it. You can even chart on it. It's quite pleasant. And uh, then weeks as well. They really are making an effort to get you guys to test out the exchange. You don't get offers like this floating around uh, in the market. They are doing giveaways to people that sign up using this exclusive link in the description. They are giving away sign up bonuses up to 20%, uh, some of the tiers that they are giving you. And they are also giving you a $300 trade protection campaign for your first trade on weeks. They protect your losses uh, on your first trade. And it's also, both of them are KY friendly exchanges. So take a look uh, at these two, give it a go. Uh, you can see I play around with these uh, all the time. And then look at the shopping list. They're talking gummy. Don't forget the, uh, the banter airdrop. Okay, we've got the gummy token coming to the community and uh, follow the instructions here. You can sign up on these exchanges here to participate in the gummy airdrop. Okay, that's all you need to do. Uh, just get on these exchanges, start trading, and uh, you can participate in that gummy airdrop, which is coming to the community. It's all for you guys. And uh, those of you who hear me talk about Sniper Club, it's in the description. Okay, it's all over there. You want to join Sniper Club, it's in there. You want some easy algo action, it's in there. So take a look. There's a whole shopping basket uh, for you guys. Okay, Ray. Those is done. Whiff is done. Let's go. Ave. Okay, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of DeFi, and uh, we've seen some bullish news on Ave lately. They're talking about sharing fees uh, with Ave holders, and that is why Ave has given us a nice little response. We've had a nice little bullish move here uh, on Ave in the last couple of days, and uh, things seem to be holding quite nicely. So what you can see is happening here. We've got a nice little trend and uh, pushing down, and uh, we've got a trend retest currently happening now. Okay, so watch Ave. 
119 looks like a nice little support zone why does that look nice to me uh, number one it's a trend retest number two it's the 50 day moving average and number three we've got some horizontals in play as well giving us uh, some confluence there so keep your eyes on that let's look at uh, our current fibbage as well i'm sure we've got something tucked in here and uh, uh, let's see we've got the 618 as well okay so as we speak right now Ave is trying to hold this 382 fib you can see uh, it's happening in front of us and with regards to support if you're looking and uh, you are bullish on Ave, this is where you want to track your support this is the region you want to watch uh, as your next potential bounce zone uh, it's the 50 day ma 618 fib horizontal uh, all in play for you 119 okay so nice little zone here uh, for Ave. 119 that could be a nice juicy little region uh, for Ave traders and then what happens if we get more weakness? What happens if we get a meltdown uh, from BTC? Well, you want to start tracking your next horizontal zone. You want to start tracking your next big FIB region uh, and things like that. So what you want to do is go to the, uh, the lows of your last move. This was on the 5th of February. And I'm going to take a FIB from the low to the high. And I want to start tracking where's my next big meltdown region where's my next massive zone uh, for Ave? and you can see the 618 is staring us right in the face here uh, as we speak there we go uh, 618 is sitting for Ave at 110 okay that is your next meltdown zone that is your next potential bounce area uh, that you're going to be looking at so keep your eyes on the 618 fib the number is 110 that is a big area there for Ave. mark that on your charts and then i'm talking capitulation things here if this market is really going to fall out and uh, you know they're going to rip the rip the rug out of us here you're looking at Ave at 97 that is your next big region so mark these areas on your charts here 110 and 97 uh, for Ave. that's extreme uh, meltdown levels this is extreme uh, scenarios there but just plan accordingly make sure uh, you have these uh, on your charts okay I see Thomas is saying me too Nancy I don't know what Thomas is talking about but Thomas gave us this bullhorn VIP Thomas VIP in the chats here um Ethan says Doge is the leading indicator for this market. Uh, Catalina says Doge is looking sexy. Uh, okay, let's go. Another DeFi I got for you guys. Uh, Jupe. Okay, this is on Solana and uh, just a nice little one. If you guys are trading this and you're interested in some DeFi plays, this is looking quite decent. Let's had a nice little bounce in this area and uh, you can see what's happened during that meltdown. You just want to try and identify where's your next bullish zone, where's your next reaction zone and look at this perfect reaction here on the horizontal tied in with a trend here uh, for dupe. So looking good, nice little support zone. What do the bulls do now? What do we look for uh, when we get our next move? So the easiest thing or the easiest play Play here is you want to look for this trend break and uh, the retest and then we can start getting uh, aggressive on this dupe but right now this is quite a bullish pattern this little wedge uh, this downward shaping wedge because when we blow it we should get a nice little push higher so dupe traders if you're looking for support watch your level here 1.2 Okay, that's a huge area for you. 1.233. Watch that zone. If we get a meltdown in the market, you are looking at 1.12, and then you're looking at 1.05 and uh, you can see how nicely this 1.05 is currently tying in with the 50 day ma uh, just below here so look out for these regions these are your key levels uh, for dupe when do we turn full bull when are we going to we going to turn bull when we start breaking that trend and uh, then we start pushing it so eyes on these levels and uh, if you're fiddling around watch these supports watch these lows uh, that we hit earlier today ray how's our likeage going here uh, it's going pretty good. It could be better though. Could be horrible. better. Yeah. But we don't want to let guys. We don't want to let Ray down. Okay. Um. I've got. Uh, what have I got? I've got an update for you on Redo. Okay. Let me know in the chat who traded this Redo, uh, with me yesterday. I think we've we've done like two X, uh, on this Redo, and uh, then I'll I'll show you if we get enough likes. I'll show you two meme coins that I'm currently trading uh, at the moment. So if, we, but Ray's gonna decide, you have gotta give Ray the likes. Um, I've got my bird eye up here. And uh, if you get enough likes there, Ray, I'll show I'll show the meme coins that we're trading at the moment. Um, okay, let's get back into- 250 more, 250 likes. 250 more. Okay, let's go. 250 more likes. Um, okay, here's another one. Uh, AI play. So we're just trying to cover a few sectors for you guys and, uh, you know, just touch on a couple of things. And uh, you can see a nice, pretty little picture. How clean is this? We've got fetch coming down onto a rising trend, onto a 786 foot. 
and horizontal. So uh, a nice little reaction zone in play currently. Look at this. Nice little horizontals here. We've got the 786. Look at this 50-day MA just pushing uh, fetch up or at least trying to hold uh, fetch up for now. So what do we want to watch? What levels? 2.4 okay big area for us 2.4 we get a push down into that region we're looking for that area to hold what do we do if the market starts melting down where do we look next where's our next panic zone where's our next reaction zone and uh, the first area you want to pay attention to 1.97 okay that's a huge area for us look at these horizontals here 1.97 is going to give you some kind of reaction some kind of bounce uh, in that area during uh, a meltdown and then one more area for you guys look Look at this wick we can't ignore this we have to acknowledge uh, that it's there uh, 1.28 okay so these are three uh, big areas now for fetch and they're going to be very much determined by what btc is going to do next so uh, weakness zone number one look for a bounce here 2.43 next one 1.95 and a little bit lower down look at 1.27 Okay, look, look at those regions. Those are your zones. Those are your hot zones. Those are your bleed out zones. Those are the areas where you look for buyers. So if you are about to ping one of these zones and you've been sweating out in the market, just go back to your chart. Look at the levels that you've marked. If you are moving onto that zone after a long bleed out, maybe you want to just sit back and wait for some kind of reaction first and just see what it's going to do in that area before uh, you make a rash decision. Because remember, by the time we get to that next major level, uh, we've often bled out for a day or two and uh, the market's feeling super bearish. And these levels tend to give us uh, a reaction or some kind of relief bounce. And just like you saw uh, with BTC today. Um, Jay Wasabi says, if BTC bounces to 100K before May, Jesus, I don't know. You guys don't want to see me without a beard. Are we taking this? Um, Are we taking this back? 100K before May. We got 20 okay. days. Fuck it. Okay. Fuck it. Let's do it. Okay. 100K before May. I'll shave my beard off. 100K May first. You got to shave the beard. 100K. 100K before May. I'll shave my beard off. Okay. We'll huh. save this clip. We'll save this clip. And guys, you know, this beard means a lot to me. Uh, it means a lot to me. I mean, you guys, I see Joy Banter says, no beard remains. Guys, do you even know? I don't even have a chin. You think I have a chin. It's a beard chin. Uh, my chin is actually 100K. just here. 100K in May. Everyone buy Bitcoin. <laughs> guys, you better pump. You better pump this. You better pump this. Uh, Sean, uh, Bruce in the chat says, to the moon before June. <laughs> and Ray, you're going to lose that beard as well, bro. Uh, yours is coming off. Um, okay, here's uh, Render. A nice little reaction. Uh, 618 bounce for Render. Okay, so uh, things aren't looking too dark and gloomy yet uh, on Render, but we do have to acknowledge we had a 618 visit, so a little reaction. And uh, this is exactly why I call them reaction zones. These are these are our get out of jail areas these are the areas where when you're absolutely panicking just look for the reaction in these zones they can even save you one or two percent if you're trying to exit the market and things are bleeding you know look for your reaction on your big reaction zones they can save you if you are sitting in position and uh, you know you you're looking to sell while you're dipping into a massive region just see if you get that little move you can sometimes save two or three percent and especially leverage traders there if you're on 5x 10x leverage and you're saving two or three percent uh, it really starts adding up so really identify your levels when in doubt zoom out always pull out look back and uh, just always try and get the global picture or the bigger picture uh, as to what is actually going down. Okay, now, if you're trading render, what is your plan? Well, you can watch today's lows. You can watch the support. If the market miraculously turns now super bullish and everything starts pumping, well, this is your support level that you're going to be watching. So mark this one on your charts, 8.77. Okay, that is your support zone that you want to keep your eyes on. But we can't ignore what we see here. We see horizontals. We see a trend a little bit lower down and uh, we need to plan for this okay so i would suggest next level for render eight eight on the button okay look out for eight because we've got a nice juicy little candle here that they could easily come and take out look at these horizontals here in play for us look at this trend region as well so i would say look out for eight uh, for render and then we do have a 786 fib just backing you up uh, at 7.5 so look for these zones look at these areas here these are reaction zones. These are zones of interest if we do uh, get a meltdown here and we don't uh, and we don't kick on. So watch your support where we are right now. If they're going to bleed us out further, uh, make sure you are prepared. Make sure you know your next buy level. Okay. 
and hopefully you guys are I'm, i know i'm talking really fast but hopefully you guys are going to pause these things and uh, you know screenshot or whatever you need uh for these charts okay uh next one is ondo so some rwas again if we get a meltdown in the market you want to buy rwas of course because it's the next big thing right blackrock are all over this so uh, i've just picked ondo and rio for you or relio uh, which we've spoken about multiple times and you can see ondo is starting to look fun at uh, around about zero 0.6426 okay so i've got my eyes on ondo a little bit lower down i don't want to rush uh, into anything here because i've got a 618 lower down uh, for ondo and i think if we are a little bit patient here we might be able to buy ondo uh, and in these areas zero uh, zero point six four two six so that is the zone that i'm watching eagerly now uh, for for ondo and if we lose that zone okay you can see it's clearly uh, it's clearly pictured here on this chart for you guys that is your meltdown zone okay your next meltdown level 0 0.38 okay this is like absolute meltdown this is stink bid zone this is where you're setting limit orders uh, for these dead of the night flush outs uh, and all these things these are your levels so i repeat these ones again 0 0.64 and uh, 0. Point, call it 0 0.37 0 0.38 both of these uh, are areas uh, where you want to be uh, for under and remember rwa's we know the narrative. We know people love RWAs. It's going to be the next big thing, apparently. And uh, if you want it, uh, you want a piece of it, these are your zones. Those are your areas that you're going to be given an opportunity. So remember, when you hit these areas, don't, don't, um, you know, don't panic. Okay, we, we're moving down into a nice zone. Remember that you were looking up when you were looking uh, at buying Ondo up here. You were looking at buying at the top of Ondo. Remember how you wished for lower prices. Well, here's your opportunity. Lower down. If it comes to this area, set your alarms. These are your areas that you are looking uh, to buy these tokens. Okay, another one for you, uh, Relio, R-I-O. Um, yeah, absolute banger. We've had this one on the show multiple times and uh, looking good here for us. So anything around about uh, two two on the button for me i love this region and uh, take a look here so watch these horizontals keep your eyes on this zone and you can see we are in a downtrend currently and uh, let's see what happens here if we do push lower you should have some kind of buy opportunity there and uh, if they want to bleed us out your next big area uh, for relio that's the ticker is rio 1.7 Okay, you're watching these guys. So this is what it would potentially look like on weakness. You're looking for longs anywhere uh, in this region here and a nice juicy uh, little 618 that could work out quite well for you. So keep your eyes on that one uh, looking nice. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else we got? I see Jelani says ICP is going down to 13. Um, gaming, somebody's asking for gaming. Look, I've got a gaming token for you. Uh, we had so many tokens today and uh, there's so much content. So uh, I just wanted to make sure I covered you guys in, in you know, all sectors. And uh, this is Nakamoto Games. I haven't looked at this one uh, in quite a while and it's starting to move into a hot zone. And uh, this is a big zone of interest for me. And uh, you can see why this is now looking juicy. So uh, what do we have here? We've got some horizontals in play. I've got a 786. Six fib. I've got the 200 day moving average and uh, I've got a trend as well. So for me, Nakamoto Games, this is a spot buy and uh, this could be the move. Uh, that we are looking for for well it's quite a big move potentially here uh, let's just look at the size of this guy it's 110 percent okay to the highs if we do get a strong bounce there um what could potentially play out here so let's see option one i would say let's look for a bounce here option one look for this bounce off the 200 day moving average okay option two what can we see here uh next little zone you're looking for a bounce at 1.12 and then you're looking for something along those lines now this is the ultimate bear scenario this is like bear market hell uh, that uh, they could potentially take us to so i don't want to scare anyone away but uh, the first bounce you're looking at nakamoto games 1.65 watch that region i think that's going to be a nice long zone for traders if anything you're even going to get a sculpt there you're going to get a big move uh, it might not be the hundred percent but you're going to get something uh, out of nakamoto there and uh, you know i would say you could get anything uh, up to about 29 30 percent uh, if you buy that 200 day ma trend and 786 fib so keep your eyes uh, on this Nakamoto, Nakamoto and uh, set your alarms for this 1.65 level. Okay, uh, Raze, how, how's our likes there? I'm still short sure about 93. 93 likes. Right, you, want, you want action? Come on. 
Come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I've got last one, update, uh, Ton. Okay, Ton Network, uh, you know the drill. Everyone's bullish on Ton at the moment. This thing is absolutely flying. Um, they're talking about, they're basically going to be the new world coin. They're taking palm uh, reading and all these things from people to identify humans and all these things. They have big plans. We're talking 500 million users or whatever the story is uh, that they're planning at the moment. So if you're looking for Ton uh, plays that uh, you want to be watching your support levels, we looked at this yesterday. So no changes here. 6.4 uh, is your support level that you're going to pay attention to 6.4 ideally we get some kind of flag and then we get a nice little bullish pop uh, once it's consolidated a little bit so watch this rising trend and uh, while everything is flying uh, on uh, ton you want to make sure you are looking at the dog okay so we spoke about this dog yesterday the market cap down here was probably about uh, 35 million 40 million it was somewhere in this region uh, yesterday when we spoke about this thing it's absolutely ripped uh, it pinged at about 0.9 so if you took this trade uh, or you jumped into this dog you are absolutely cooking and uh, why am i potentially bullish on this well number one it's the dog on the ton network number two they've got big things planned and number three they spoke about launching some kind of phone and uh, we know what Sol did when they launched the phone they airdropped bonk tokens on it they dropped their dog on the phone so uh, if the ton network is going to release some kind of phone well then we might see uh, you know a bit of a scramble for these airdrops and uh, these type of things so keep your eyes on this dog uh, it's called redo dog and uh, you need to buy it on the ton network so it's a bit of a story but uh, you have to go into ton keeper wallet and uh, then you're going to use a, a stone fire, one of those things. And that's how you can buy uh, this, uh, this, uh, redo, this redo token. Okay. Uh, let's say, uh, okay. How's our likes here, Ray? I got it. Yeah, we're good. Are we good? Okay. So we got enough likes. I'm going to give you two meme coins that I'm looking at at the moment. And uh, let's, uh, let me pull this up for you. Okay. Number one uh, is Tuka. You guys know I've been trading this Tuka and uh, I've got my eyes closely on this thing. And you can see right now it's looking all right. So Tuka has been moving nicely. I think I brought it to you guys on the show. Uh, probably about a four or five million market cap somewhere around there. We started looking at this thing. It's now $22 million uh, market cap and still looking strong. It's looking bullish here for now. So what I would suggest if you want a piece of Tuka, you are nearly at your entry zone your entry zone is a little bit lower down 0.02 and uh, you want to just pay attention here we've got a trend we've got a horizontal and we've got a 618 fib in this little region so there could be a buy coming here uh, for took a shortly a nice little downtrend in play as well so look out for this region here uh, 0.02 and then a little bit lower down a meltdown zone uh, that you're going to be watching 0.00875 so keep your eyes uh, on that region for your next bounce but i mean that's going to be dark if we that down i mean if we that deep down there uh, it's going to be a little bit messy uh, diana okay diana i'll sort you out okay <laughs> Okay. Okay. So there's my plan on Tuka. You can see there's a buy zone coming in. 618 horizontal trend uh, looking good there for me. And uh, if we do lose that trend, well, then I would sit back and wait uh, until you get it much lower down and uh, we'll reassess. 0 0.008 uh, is the next sort of big zone uh, for Tuka traders. Let's give, uh, let's give Diana. It was Diana, hey, Ray? Was it Diana? Ray's deserted me. I'm not sure, but our weave needs to be handled for sure. Okay, it's handle our weave. Okay, so please, this please. was uh, we were running through our weave today uh, on uh, Sniper Club. We did a private Zoom for the Sniper Club members, and uh, you know Sheldon and I were both uh, doing some live trading there. We actually took some trades uh, during that session, and uh, this was the plan for our weave. So we were looking at a few uh, scenarios here. We were trying to just understand, you know, where we were at this uh, this current point in the in the our weave market because we know there was so much bullish news around our weave, and uh, now it's been fading a little bit. I think the narrative. Or the, or the fad uh you know it starts wearing off so you start you need to start tracking uh, your big reaction zones you need to start tracking your areas where you can potentially get a bounce and uh, they've actually front run the 786 so it's a little bit messy uh it's not perfect but what we can give you here uh is some horizontals that you can play with Okay, so watch your support. You can see where we've had this bounce now. We've got three candles here uh, that gave us a bit of a move. Let's clean this one up. Okay, so what I would say here, our weave, big support that you want to pay attention to, big level uh, that you need to watch. 786 horizontals, this is where you want to play. So watch today's support, 29, watch 29. A little bit lower, you're going to look for a reaction down to 27.8. 
Okay, 27.8 is your next one. And then you've got this huge wick, okay? This is a meltdown zone. If you get the meltdown zone, you're gonna start looking somewhere in this region here uh, at 22, 23, that sort of area. So that is what you're gonna look for. And uh, when do you turn bullish? Well, you can start turning bullish again uh, when we start breaking trends. So right now we're looking for reactions. We're looking for little bounces. When we get to these regions, this is always decision time. Does it reject and come lower to our next reaction zone? Or do we pop through there uh, and give the bulls a run? Remember, if we pop through there, we're going to be looking for support uh, on that 50-day MA. And once we reclaim that uh, on a retest, then we can turn bullish again and uh, start sending it. Okay, uh, guys, everything is smashed for you. I've given you all the levels. We've had a strong bounce for BTC. Let's watch that BTC closely. Maybe a double bottom is coming. Maybe not. Eyes on dominance every minute. When we have weakness in the market, make sure you are watching the BTC dominance chart. If that thing starts pumping, you want to just make sure you start tightening up stops uh, and doing those type of things on your altcoins. Uh, guys, good luck. It's been a rough couple of days. I know these altcoins have been under pressure, but maybe that was the bottom. We'll check in tomorrow. We'll see uh, how we're going. There might be some more news in the markets tomorrow. I think we have PPI uh, tomorrow as well. So we're going to see uh, a lot of action this week out there in the markets, guys. Catch you later.